Hey class, I'm Mr Thornton, you've got 18 days until May, and... What is that? Oh, come on! Mm. Ooh! I'm Mr Thornton, you've got 18 days until May, and I'm going to help you succeed in your GCSEs. This lesson, how to avoid procrastination. <laughs> In this video I'm going to give you 7 tips to beat procrastination, but if you've got any more then please leave them in the comments below and if I get enough of them I'll do a second video on this. In some cases where you've got time to think about an issue, procrastinating and not jumping straight in and giving it a little bit of thought can be a really useful way to approach the problem. I often find that I come up with better ideas if I mull them over for longer. But if you are procrastinating when it's something where you've got a looming deadline, that can be a real problem. And I've got to be honest at this point, it's one of my failings as well. I tend to procrastinate quite a bit and put things off. I'm not the only one though. Since I started this series of videos, this is easily the most requested topic. It's the thing which most of you seem to be having a problem with. Shakib Hussain, Alec Clues, Nikhil Shah, Pants interesting choice of name, Taryn Everdeen and Yasmin Shams have all said that they're having trouble with procrastination and that they'd like some pointers. So I'm going to try and give you some guidance. There's no single solution, there's no single way around it and basically the overall piece of advice is you're just going to have to get down to it and do some work but I'm going to give you some suggestions for ways which will help you get down to doing that work. First of all, if you've been watching the other videos in this series and applying the techniques I've suggested in them, then you should already be using some useful tactics for avoiding procrastination. For example, when I talked about revision timetables, I was quite specific about the amount of time you needed to spend. Not just the amount of time you needed to spend on revision, but what topic you were revising and when, and how long you were allowed for a break. Being strict with yourself over these time limits and setting a timer if necessary, particularly when it comes to breaks, will really help you get focused and get on with that work. An even better way to do this is not just to revise for that fixed amount of time, but to state exactly what time you're starting. So say, for example, I am going to start my revision at 7 p.m. I'm going to do half an hour until 7.30. I'm going to take exactly eight minutes break until 7.38, and then I'm going to start revising again for another half an hour until eight minutes past eight. Be specific to the minute and be honest with yourself and strict with yourself when it comes to when you start and when you stop. Don't get tempted to be trying to finish a little bit early. Give yourself the full amount of time. I also mentioned in the last video on setting up the place where you're going to be doing your revision that it's a good idea to make sure you get rid of distractions like mobile phones, tablets and computers if you're not using them for that particular bit of revision. And you need to make sure that some of your revision for each subject every week is done without those things because you won't have them in the exam. So make sure you are doing proper old fashioned revision without them. Take those things and give them to someone else and say, I'm not allowed to have this back for the next half an hour and then I'm only allowed to have it for eight minutes. Share your revision timetable with them. Make sure that they know what the rules are as well. If you've got someone else who's nagging you just a little bit, it makes it a lot easier to get going. Getting more people involved, getting those people to help you focus on what you need to do can be hugely motivational. You can even take that a step further. Tell those people exactly what revision you're doing. Don't just limit it to family, tell your friends as well. Make a declaration, I am going to do this tonight. 
and then that puts you under a lot more pressure to actually do it. If you've left it with some sort of vague, I'll do this at some point, then that's much more easy for you to put off. But if you've promised everyone that you know that you are definitely going to do this much work tonight, then you put yourself under a bit more pressure. And with a little bit more pressure, it's a lot easier to get started. A lot of people find five minutes of light exercise committing to do that at the start of whatever it is that they want to do really helps as well. So get up off the sofa, go for a quick run round the block, do a few star jumps, do a few squats, do some push-ups, a small amount of light exercise and tell yourself this is how I start. That's always an easy way to get going because once you've done that little bit of exercise, which really doesn't require an awful lot of thought and doesn't require a huge amount of motivation, once you've started that, you're up, you're moving, there's blood flowing to your brain and you will find it easier to get on with the next task, the task which you really need to do. Be careful that this doesn't turn into half an hour's exercise, five minutes maximum. If you're looking at half an hour's worth of revision and finding it a little bit intimidating, tell yourself you're going to sit down and do five minutes. Five minutes is nothing. That's less time than I'm suggesting that you should spend on a break. Everyone could sit down and do five minutes. And when you get to the end of that five minutes, see how you feel. I'll bet you could make it to 10 minutes. And when you've done that 10 minutes, and that 10 minutes will go by quickly, I promise you, when you've got to the end of that 10 minutes, see if you could stretch it to the half hour. Don't think of it as an entire block of time. Think of it as little tiny bits. Break it down into tiny steps and do one tiny step. Commit to doing one tiny step. Commit to starting and doing that one bit and you'll find that the next step is a lot easier. Competition is a hugely motivating thing. So challenge one of your friends, someone else who's doing the same subject. Tell them, I'm going to revise topics X, Y, and Z tonight, and I'm gonna bring in my notes to school tomorrow and show you them. And get them to do the same thing. Now it's possible you might not get everything done, or it's possible they might not get everything done. Whoever's done the least, I can pretty much guarantee you they will make sure that they do the most the next time. If you want to go on and do a little bit extra to make sure that you're ahead of the other person, there's nothing stopping you. But compete with each other if that's what it takes. Now this is useful for when you're making revision notes and useful for when you're going through things like that. It's really useful if there's some sort of written piece of work which you've got to produce or some sort of coursework which you've got to produce as well. So this can stand you in really good stead in lots of situations, not just revision. Get some competition going with someone else who's got to do the same thing. Finally, don't be too down on yourself if you don't get as much done as you intended to do. Turn that into a new focus. Turn that into a new challenge for yourself. Yes, I didn't achieve what I wanted to do today, but I am going to make sure that I get caught up. I am going to achieve my goals tomorrow. I am going to reach out and grab that thing that I want. I'm going to make sure that I get there. This wasn't good enough for me today, but I can do better tomorrow. Remember, lots of people struggle with procrastination. It's a really, really common problem. And as I say, I have the exact same problem myself. I don't always get on with work when I should do. A lot of these videos, I think about them and I wait, and then it gets to the point where I really wish I'd started them sooner. Sometimes that can be a good thing. Sometimes in that intervening time, I do have good ideas. Other times, I do wish I'd started a little bit sooner but it is important to make sure that you actually keep trying, keep getting back up, keep pulling yourself together, and remember that you can do this. You've just got to take that first step. I hope that video really helped you. If it did, it really helps my channel when you like, subscribe, and share these videos. Let people know I'm going to succeed in my GCSE. All the links and info for this video are in the description, and please let me know what you thought in the comments or on Twitter at MrThorntonUK, or use the hashtag SucceedInMyGCSE. There are loads more GCSE science videos on my channel too. Here's another one which YouTube thinks you might find useful. You can click my picture just here to subscribe, click down there to check how well you understood with the Snap Quiz website and app, and you can click just here to get my revision guides. Good luck in your GCSEs everyone, and thanks very much for watching.